The narrative unfolds like a relentless train wreck, so brace yourself for the intricate details. The crux of the matter revolves around the passing of my father, a deeply distressing event that transpired in December. In the twilight of his life, I assumed the role of his caretaker, a responsibility that weighed heavily upon me. My sister, on the other hand, made lofty promises of moving into Lenahan, yet these assurances dissolved like mist in the morning sun. Despite the gravity of our father's condition, she remained conspicuously absent, leaving me to shoulder the burden alone. His health, both physical and mental, deteriorated steadily, casting a pall of despair over our household. The toll on my own mental well-being was palpable, plunging me into the depths of profound despondency. Recognizing the dire straits of my mental health, my physician issued a stark warning. I was on the precipice of succumbing to caregiver fatigue, a perilous precipice from which recovery seemed remote. With a heavy heart, I implored my sister to lend her aid in caring for our ailing father, for I could no longer bear the weight of the responsibility alone. This plea fell on deaf ears, a fleeting gesture of familial obligation. It was approximately six months prior to his demise that I beseeched her for assistance, a plea that fell upon indifferent ears. Her response was a fleeting visit, a mere twenty minutes of perfunctory interaction with our father before absconding with his bank card under the pretense of procuring groceries. Little did he know, concealed within her purchase was a bottle of alcohol, an indulgence funded by his unwitting generosity. His mental faculties, already compromised by illness, failed to detect the financial sleight of hand orchestrated by his own flesh and blood. Faced with the daunting task of managing my father's affairs, I assumed control over his finances, meticulously scrutinizing every transaction to ensure fiscal integrity. His explicit instructions, born of a lucid moment of foresight, guided my actions, automate bill payments, alleviate the burden of financial management from his weary shoulders. Fast forward to the present, and the grim truth unfurls like a tattered banner in the wind. My sister, in a brazen act of betrayal, has not only liquidated our father's accounts but also absconded with the entirety of his assets, leaving naught but fiscal ruin in her wake. The magnitude of this betrayal is staggering, with debts exceeding $8,000 looming ominously on the horizon. My once thick mane now falls in clumps, a tangible manifestation of the stress that gnaws at my very core. The specter of impending homelessness looms large, casting a long shadow over my already beleaguered existence. The saga of unpaid bills and familial betrayal continues unabated, as my phone service has been abruptly terminated not once but twice due to outstanding payments. Faced with this predicament, I reached out to the phone company in a desperate bid to transfer the account into my name, only to be met with bureaucratic red tape. It seems the requisite paperwork lies within the possession of my sister, who, conveniently, remains elusive despite my repeated entreaties for assistance. Each attempt to procure the necessary documents in order to assert control over my own affairs is met with a cryptic assertion of unauthorized access, leaving me bewildered and frustrated in equal measure. Throughout this ordeal, my sister has maintained a steadfast insistence on maintaining a veil of secrecy, admonishing me to withhold news of our father's passing from our extended family until matters are resolved. Promises of support and succor have proven hollow, dissipating like smoke in the wind as my pleas for aid are met with a resounding silence. Left with no recourse, I made the decision to break my silence, divulging the truth of our familial strife to our relatives. The fallout was swift and severe, with condemnation raining down upon my sister like a tempest unleashed. Yet, amidst the maelstrom of recrimination, a knowing doubt creeps into my consciousness, am I, in fact, the villain of this piece. Perhaps I overstepped my bounds in airing our dirty laundry, unleashing a storm of vitriol upon my own flesh and blood. Nonetheless, my resolve remains unshaken, buoyed by the assurance that justice must prevail. In a bid to wrest control from the clutches of betrayal, my brother and I have enlisted the aid of legal counsel, scheduling a pivotal appointment with a lawyer to chart a course through this tempestuous sea of familial discord. As the chorus of voices on Reddit resounds with declarations of solidarity and support, a kernel of doubt lingers within my soul, whispering that perhaps I have erred in my quest for retribution. Yet, in the face of overwhelming evidence of my sister's perfidy, I stand resolute in my conviction that truth, no matter how painful, must ultimately triumph over deceit.
It's simply unfathomable to comprehend the depths of depravity that some individuals can sink to. And in the case of your sister, it appears she has plumbed the very nadir of human decency. An unequivocal indictment of her character as nothing short of abhorrent seems apt, and given the circumstances, it is imperative that you and your legal counsel explore avenues to preclude her from benefiting from your father's estate. The toll exacted by this ordeal manifests in tangible ways, as evidenced by the distressing sight of your hair falling out in clumps, a visceral reminder of the weight that bears down upon you. The specter of homelessness looms ominously, a stark testament to the havoc wreaked by her callous actions. As the narrative unfolds, another tale emerges, one fraught with familial discord and the perennial struggle to assert autonomy in the face of relentless toxicity. The rift between you and your older sister, a chasm forged by irreconcilable differences and her manifest disregard for others, serves as the backdrop for a litany of grievances. From betrayals of trust to acts of calculated cruelty, her actions paint a portrait of a remorseless antagonist, intent on inflicting harm wherever she goes. The litany of transgressions, from slandering your character to attempting to seduce your husband, serves as a damning indictment of her character. Her recent attempts at reconciliation, under the guise of familial obligation, ring hollow in the face of such egregious misconduct. Your refusal to acquiesce to her overtures, symbolized by the return of the maternity dress she sent, serves as a resolute declaration of your autonomy and a refusal to be drawn into her web of manipulation. In the crucible of familial strife, you emerge as a paragon of resilience, steadfast in your refusal to be cowed by her machinations. In a poignant narrative of familial estrangement, the refusal to indulge in the whims of a toxic sibling emerges as a steadfast assertion of personal boundaries. When confronted with the proposition of embarking on a joint venture into the realm of baby shopping, the resolute response of no reverberated with a clarity born of unyielding resolve. The subsequent exchange, fraught with tension and recrimination, served as a crucible in which the bonds of familial obligation were tested and ultimately found wanting. The simple yet profound declaration of wanting nothing from her coupled with the admonition to leave oneself and one's family untainted by her toxic presence, served as a clarion call for emancipation from the shackles of familial duty. The retort, tinged with annoyance and thinly veiled entitlement, sought to invalidate the boundaries set forth by the protagonist, invoking the specter of familial obligation as a cudgel with which to bludgeon them into compliance. The intervention of parental figures, laden with admonishments of potential regret and appeals to the sanctity of familial ties, served as a poignant reminder of the societal pressure to prioritize blood relations above all else. Yet, in the face of such admonitions, the protagonist remains steadfast in their conviction, steadfastly refusing to capitulate to the emotional blackmail of guilt and obligation. The chorus of voices on Reddit, resounding with declarations of solidarity and support, serves as a testament to the universality of the protagonist's plight, a reaffirmation of the inherent right to self-preservation and autonomy. The narrative arc, fraught with betrayal and disappointment, culminates in a moment of cathartic liberation, as the protagonist severs ties with their toxic sibling, casting off the chains of familial obligation in favor of a life unencumbered by toxicity and manipulation. In the crucible of adversity, the protagonist emerges not as an antagonist, but as a paragon of resilience, a beacon of hope for those who dare to defy the constraints of toxic familial dynamics. In the labyrinthine web of familial dynamics, the question arises, am I the antagonist for refusing to whitewash the legacy of a deceased relative despite societal expectations to the contrary? The narrative unfolds with a disquieting portrayal of my uncle, a figure whose actions straddled the line between benign eccentricity and predatory behavior. His penchant for leering at his younger nieces, coupled with an unsettling propensity for physical closeness that bordered on inappropriate, cast a pall of discomfort over family gatherings. The specter of his online behavior, with its voyeuristic overtones and conspicuous displays of material wealth, only served to compound the unease that lingered in his wake. Yet, in the aftermath of his passing, the veneer of familial piety threatened to obscure the uncomfortable truths that lurked beneath the surface. The funeral, a somber affair punctuated by eulogies extolling his professional achievements, served as a crucible in which the complexities of grief and moral ambiguity collided with unsettling force. Amidst the mournful reverie, I found myself ensconced in a group conversation, 
flanked by relatives whose rose-tinted reminiscences painted a portrait of a man whose altruism knew no bounds. The narrative spun by my uncle and aunt, a tale of selfless generosity and magnanimity, stood in stark contrast to the unsettling truths that I bore witness to. The recollection of a seemingly altruistic gesture, whereby my uncle purportedly assisted a young acquaintance in the arduous task of furniture relocation, struck a discordant note in light of my own recollections of his behavior. The memory of a social gathering, marked by his intrusive presence and ostentatious displays of networking, served as a chilling reminder of the dissonance between perception and reality. The juxtaposition of his purported selflessness with the unsettling undercurrent of manipulation that pervaded his interactions served as a sobering reminder of the complexities inherent in navigating the terrain of familial relationships. In the face of societal pressure to conform to a narrative of familial piety, I chose instead to confront the uncomfortable truths that lay beneath the surface, refusing to sanctify the memory of a man whose actions belied the veneer of respectability. In the crucible of moral ambiguity, I stand resolute in my refusal to acquiesce to societal expectations, steadfast in my commitment to truth and integrity, even in the face of censure and condemnation. In the intricate tapestry of familial dynamics, the question arises, am I the antagonist for refusing to partake in the collective amnesia that shrouds the unsavory actions of a deceased relative in a veil of false piety? The narrative unfolds with a disquieting recollection of my uncle's behavior, a pattern of manipulation and predatory conduct that cast a shadow of discomfort over familial gatherings. His ostensible acts of generosity, cloaked in the guise of altruism, served as a thinly veiled pretext for the pursuit of his own selfish ends. The memory of his overtures towards a young acquaintance, punctuated by the presence of a female friend enlisted as a buffer, served as a chilling testament to the calculated nature of his advances. The revelation that he lingered behind after her departure, Engaging in protracted conversation until she felt compelled to extricate herself from his presence painted a picture of a man whose actions belied the veneer of respectability that his mourners sought to propagate. In the wake of my living relative's recollection of his purported acts of selflessness, I felt compelled to interject, to speak truth to power in defiance of societal expectations of deference to the deceased. The incredulous reactions of those around me served as a stark reminder of the discomfort that attends the exposure of uncomfortable truths, yet I remained resolute in my refusal to capitulate to the pressures of conformity. In the echo chamber of Reddit, a chorus of voices rose in solidarity, reaffirming my conviction that honesty, no matter how uncomfortable, is the bedrock upon which true familial bonds are forged. The recollections of others, sharing their own experiences of grappling with the legacy of deceased relatives, served as a poignant reminder that the truth, however painful, is a soft for the soul, a balm that soothes the wounds inflicted by the passage of time. In the crucible of moral ambiguity, I stand unrepentant, steadfast in my commitment to truth and integrity, even in the face of censure and condemnation. In a poignant recollection of childhood trauma, the narrative unfurls with unsettling clarity, recounting a formative experience that cast a long shadow over the protagonist's psyche. The innocence of youth, shattered by an act of corporal punishment inflicted by a figure of authority, left scars that lingered long into adulthood. The perplexing notion that wrongdoing had precipitated the punishment, coupled with the tacit endorsement of the grandmother, served as a catalyst for a distorted understanding of justice and accountability. The legacy of this traumatic incident, a profound reluctance to speak out against perceived injustices and a pervasive sense of self-doubt colored the protagonists' interactions with their extended family for years to come. Yet, in the crucible of introspection, a realization dawns, the power to rewrite the narrative lies within their grasp. The opportunity to challenge entrenched patterns of behavior and advocate for truth and accountability represents a chance to break free from the shackles of silence and reclaim agency over one's own narrative. In the digital realm of Reddit, a chorus of voices rises in solidarity, offering validation and support to the protagonist as they navigate the complexities of familial dysfunction. The suggestion to extend a compassionate hand to other vulnerable individuals within the family unit, thereby breaking the cycle of abuse and silence, serves as a beacon of hope in an otherwise tumultuous sea of uncertainty. In the final story, the protagonist grapples with the cultural expectations and familial obligations that loom large in their Asian upbringing. The concept of joint family, 
a cornerstone of their cultural heritage, collides with the realities of modernity as the protagonist endeavors to carve out a path of autonomy and self-sufficiency. The decision to forge ahead in pursuit of personal and professional fulfillment, despite the familial pressures to conform, represents a courageous act of defiance against the status quo. Yet, as the protagonist wrestles with the guilt and apprehension that accompanies such a decision, the resolute determination to chart one's own course shines through. In the face of uncertainty, the protagonist stands firm, a testament to the indomitable spirit that propels them forward on their journey towards self-actualization and fulfillment. In the intricate dance of familial expectations and personal aspirations, the protagonist finds themselves at a crossroads, grappling with the weight of tradition and the pursuit of individual fulfillment. A marriage arranged by family decree blessed with a partner who shares the burdens and triumphs of entrepreneurship has borne fruit in the form of a successful shop, nurtured through tireless dedication and unwavering resolve. Yet, as the specter of familial obligation looms large, the protagonist finds themselves ensnared in a web of conflicting expectations and desires. The patriarchal decree delivered with the weight of paternal authority demands that the shop be relinquished to the care of the younger brother, a man whose indolence and lack of ambition have long been a source of frustration and resentment. The protagonist's objections, rooted in a deep-seated sense of ownership and pride in their creation, fall on deaf ears, drowned out by the chorus of familial expectation. The familial rift, exacerbated by the protagonist's refusal to acquiesce to the demands of tradition, threatens to engulf them in a maelstrom of guilt and recrimination. Yet, amidst the turmoil, a glimmer of defiance shines through, as the protagonist steadfastly refuses to relinquish control of their livelihood to an undeserving sibling. The emotional toll exacted by this familial strife is palpable, casting a shadow of doubt and uncertainty over the protagonist's once steadfast resolve. Yet, in the face of adversity, they remain resolute, buoyed by the unwavering support of their spouse and the steadfast conviction that their autonomy and self-determination are worth fighting for. As they seek counsel from the vast expanse of the internet, a beacon of wisdom and guidance in troubled times, the protagonist grapples with the weighty decision that lies before them torn between familial duty and the pursuit of personal fulfillment. In the intricate dance of familial dynamics and financial stewardship, the protagonist finds themselves navigating a labyrinth of obligation and autonomy, grappling with the weighty decision of whether to relinquish control of their hard-won business to a less-than-deserving sibling. The specter of bad credit, a shadow cast by the vicissitudes of odd jobs and economic uncertainty, is countered by the steadfast resolve and financial acumen of the protagonist's educated and financially stable wife. As plans are set in motion to secure a bank loan, the intricacies of repayment and financial responsibility loom large, shrouded in a veil of uncertainty and unfamiliarity. Yet, in the face of familial pressure to cede control to the younger brother, the protagonist remains resolute, determined to maintain a semblance of oversight and control over their livelihood. The delicate balance of power, negotiated through a web of compromise and negotiation, sees the protagonist retaining a measure of control over key aspects of the business, while affording the brother an opportunity to prove his mettle under close scrutiny. The familial rift, a gaping chasm of expectation and entitlement, threatens to engulf the protagonist in a maelstrom of guilt and recrimination. Yet, in the face of adversity, they stand firm, buoyed by the unwavering support of their spouse and the unshakable belief in their right to determine their own destiny. As the protagonist navigates the complexities of familial obligation and personal ambition, they emerge victorious, having staked their claim to autonomy and self-determination in the face of overwhelming odds. And so, as the curtain falls on this chapter of familial strife, the protagonist emerges triumphant, a beacon of resilience and fortitude in a sea of uncertainty.